Hey, what's going on? This is Joe from Merch University. And today I am interviewing Amy Nicholas. How's it going today? Hey, Joe. It's going awesome. How you doing? Oh, doing pretty good. And uh, you might know her from her daily uh, Power Punch show. And uh, what episode are you on now? Uh, I think I'm going to be doing 70 today. <laughs> oh, my God. I think I'm up there. Yeah. Yeah. It adds up when you do five days a week. So. Yeah, that is a that's a lot of stuff right there. How, how did that even get started, the power punch thing? Uh, you know, I was um, listening to a mentor of mine online, and he was talking about giving value and just you know content, content, just just give back, you know. And I felt like I was at a stage where number one, I had at least accumulated a little bit of knowledge and print on demand, and I could share some things. And I also wanted to just take the focus off myself and like what I was doing all the time, you know, grinding and uploading. And, you know, I was like, maybe this will be kind of a fun thing to do, you know, just totally about giving value. And I just went live and I, I've had my YouTube channel. Um, I've had a couple of channels and I had a little bit of experience doing YouTube videos and stuff. I was still a little bit nervous in the beginning. Uh, but, you know, after almost 70 videos now, it's just like, it's no big deal. But that's kind of how it started. Just kind of, it gets kind of normal when you um, go live all the time and you just kind of just start learning how to do it and it becomes no thing eventually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And some people say, you know, they're they're still nervous or whatever. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. I just feel like I'm just talking to people and it's like being in the room, except you can only hear me. <laughs> but yeah, it's good. Yeah, it, it's kind of better when you have um, the live chat and then you can see people who are kind of like, responding to you and asking you questions and stuff so yeah yeah i like to be very interactive and that's kind of why sometimes i'll do a an evening edition uh because most time i go live during the daytime it's just easy for me and every now and then i'll do an evening edition you know turn the lights down uh put the mood lighting <laughs> and uh put some music on and just kind of just chat you know more low-key just have people come in and ask questions yeah, you've done. A, I, I've been there a couple of times where you turn the lights down, you're playing some music, and it's yeah. like, a, then you go go for like a whole hour. Then yeah, I'll go longer because more people are commenting and asking stuff, and you know, it's just it becomes more of like a social thing at that point. Where did you get um, started in um, like reselling or uh, or what did, you, did or merch or POD? What, what was your how what was your beginnings for all this stuff? Yeah, I started um, print on demand. I never got into reselling or FBA or any of that, uh, but I came from a Kindle publishing background. That was my first like kind of online stuff. And then I went into print on demand with Shopify and Facebook ads and I hired a coach and this was back in like 2016, early 2016. And I learned the whole build a brand, you know, have one niche, run ads, you know, uh, really put some skin in the game. And that taught me a lot of foundational things that I still use to this day. Um, I currently just, I have my Shopify store still going, but I'm not running any traffic right now. And from that store, I had all these designs I was testing and I actually changed my niche like three times. So <laughs> I was like, okay, you know, and Merch by Amazon came around and uh, I think I heard Dave Espino and, and Daniel Cottle talking about it. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and apply. And it took like four months, you know, to get in. That was August, 2017. And I didn't, you know, I was just kind of uploading the designs I already had. I wasn't like pushing um, new stuff all the time to merch. It was just like, oh, these designs, you know, were on my store, they never sold. Let's give it a shot, you know? <laughs> and because I was so niched down with Shopify, um, because that was the only way to run Facebook ads, you can't just like throw up a grandma t-shirt, you know, and sell a bunch of stuff with the, with the Facebook ad. You had to really dial in on a niche and get kind of um, deep, deep into it. So I think that's why I had, you know, sales pretty easily early on with that. And then, so, wow, you only been on a year. Um, oh, did I say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 2016, August, 2016, not 2017. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Two years. I know. And I didn't take it seriously till a year after that. So coming up on a year of taking it, you know, more seriously and uh, now being at the 4k tier, almost uh, ready for 6k. So um, whatever your niche was, did, are you, when you came back, when you came to merch, are you only doing that like one niche still? 
No, no. I counted up like Ken Real suggests to do, and I counted up my niches, and I'm in like um, probably a good 120, 130 niches. And so um, do you try to expand on those niches, or do you ever um, like try to focus on those like some of those that are you're doing really well or what what is kind of like your strategy how you work your niches yeah um being that i kind of have limited slots right now because i'm i'm almost always full every day with the 4k i just focus on what i've already done what's working and work the trends or what's you know what's kind of popular uh angle with those niches and just yeah just keep fattening them up right now now when i get in some more slots open i might look into adding to the repertoire. But, you know, one of my things was just being all over the place. And I'm like, I got to hone in, you know, it's, that's where the money is at really. Do you, what would you say? Like, um, like one of your main niches, how many shirts do you have in that niche? Probably like it, unique designs. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. Just for like, okay. say you were, yeah, whatever that niche probably is. a good, well, it's hard to say cause some of them have fallen, but I know I had at least three or 400 in, in a certain niche and, probably still have live you know a good 100 to 200. that's pretty good yeah yeah i mean it's like you're just a drop in the pond if you're just throwing up like 10 shirts in a niche i mean nobody's gonna you know see you or hear from you ever again <laughs> that's what i've been doing lately i found i was looking through my stuff looking through my um shirts and designs and i'm like hey this one is like consistently selling really good and so for like the past week, I just been like flooding that niche really bad. So it's yeah. I mean, just because I only had like um, maybe five shirts that were selling, but then um, they were selling pretty good. Um, I think they were selling like maybe 20 or 30 a month. So I was like, man, I should just go crazy and see what, you know, just to give it a try because yeah, yeah. I'm on the 4,000 tier also, but um, I have, a, I've had a lot of, a lot of draw. I probably have had a lot drop off too. So I've just been trying to keep adding and adding for a, to get ready for Q4. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. I mean, um, there's just, <laughs> you know, I heard Bo Pollard on uh, real talk last week and they asked him like, well, what's your percentage if you're going to go after a niche you know, how hard are you going to go? And he's like, now of course he's at the 20 K tier, but he said something to the effect of, yeah, I put up like a thousand father's day designs and I'm just like, Whoa. Or maybe he said 2000. It was like, you know, we're all yeah. like, oh, uh, you know, you know, wonder he's successful, right? <laughs> yeah, I think I was watching that too, and I think he did say like, a, I think he said two thousand. I think he but. said two thousand because I was like, that's like ten percent of his slots, which isn't so much per se, but I don't know how many niches I have with four hundred, you know, shirts in them. You know, that would yeah. be ten percent for me. And uh, one thing I I did take from his what he said is that um. He was looking not to like what's selling this year, but to what's kind of what was selling last year. Mm -hmm. and, I was, and that's why he's getting a bunch of his sales. And that was, um, which was kind of, which was kind of cool. I was like, wow, that's, that's a good strategy. And um, uh, the other, this past weekend, I was at a Goodwill and I was looking, I, I always look at their books for design books or anything that has to do with like how I can relate it to merch or POD. And I saw this retail management college book and I was looking through it and it said like, if you want to know how to sell this year, like you're going to have some stuff that stays the same all throughout the year. So look at look at last year's stuff. The only thing that's really going to change is the, the trends, of course. So, yeah, now yeah, that makes a lot of sense when you I mean, you think about it for two seconds. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think some people, they don't think to do that because they haven't been in merch long enough. So they don't even think like, let's go back and look at last year, you know, but I know I look at my catalog sometimes and look at my sales. Okay. What was selling this time last year? Okay. Okay. Let's see if we can make some new spins on these, you know, that's what I need to do. I need it. Well, I've done that. That's what I was doing when I found out that other um, niche that I was doing, I was like, Oh yeah, maybe it should was selling good last year, but this time. So I decided to jump in on it. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to get it, to get it going. So do you um, design all your shirts or do you have a couple of designers? Yeah, I have uh, two designers. I don't design, anything i mean uh, i think i've put up maybe 10 unique designs <laughs> that i made and what was funny was a couple of them actually sold and i was just like oh these are horrible but <laughs> it's like clip art you know and i just i want to run things like a business like an empire and i'm just delegate outsource give to the professionals you know let them do their thing and that's what i noticed uh, that a lot of the people in the higher tiers that's what they do anyways yeah. I mean, when you have thousands and thousands of 
product to manage. <laughs> you kind of got to have the happy medium somewhere in there. I wish uh, merch would come up with a more easier way for us to go through our designs and manage them and even maybe put them in categories or something so we could keep better track. Yeah. And I mean, if you hit, uh, what is it? 10,000 live, they don't even show all your shirts on the dashboard anymore. <laughs> oh my, I didn't even know that. That's yeah. Crazy. Yeah. I think, um, you know, either their servers are just like, okay, that's it. You know, <laughs> you gotta go like digging around for your shirts. Oh man. I guess you could type in the niche and it would come up, right? Probably. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you're smart and you started this from the beginning, which I didn't, um, you would have like all your titles and whatnot saved somewhere. And then you could probably pull it up that way. But I didn't start doing that till I guess the beginning. I was like late last year, beginning of this year. So there's some shirts I'm like, you know, good luck finding it because maybe I changed the title at one point and now I can't even remember how I would find it. <laughs> yeah. So what what is your strategy for that? How do you how do you go about doing that? If someone wants to start that. Uh, keeping track of your stuff, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I just use a Google Sheet and my VA now, she does um, my listings for me just on the sheet, not in the dashboard. And she'll go in there, she'll put brand name in one column, uh, the title of the shirt or pop socket or whatever we're uploading. And then she, we've, we've gotten to the point where we're just doing generic bullet points because I'm like, I don't want them to say, oh, you can't say this now, you can't say that now, and I got to go through. 4,000 plus listings, you know, <laughs> so we're just keeping it generic and yeah. And I just keep it in that Google sheet. So it's easy to go back and um, find a title. Do you, um, do you have like a specific brand name or uh, do you just uh, change it up every time y'all list a shirt? Yeah, we change it up all the time. Uh, I really didn't see a benefit to, I, I did have a lot of brand names for, for a bit where I was putting, you know, anywhere from 25 to hundred shirts under that, that brand. And either a, you get copycats ripping off everything or B um, I was running into some trouble with like the, uh, I think was it the headline or the product display ads. One of them is like the brand name can't be too long. <laughs> and I was like, you know, and then people still would copy uh, my brand name, like exactly, even though it was very unique and, and rip off my whole listing and everything. I'm like, there's, there's just no point right now to focus on that. So I just stopped. Are you a uh, triple mess G? <laughs> <laughs> no, I am not the triple G mess. <laughs> <laughs> <Triple G Mavs. laughs> you know, I'd be sitting here with like my mounds of cash behind me if I was. <laughs> I know that uh, they always, people always mention that in the interviews. So I, had to, I had to ask. I, I feel like it's uh, a couple of people or, or some sort of a company running that show. It must be because there's, there's a couple other names too that people were mentioning on some other show. I forgot <laughs> like lick or leak or something like oh, that. Oh yeah. The one with the nice illustrations. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It looks like liquid, but it's like L I Q U E or something. Yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, I think actually I was watching uh, Neil Lassen's video uh, yesterday and he was mentioning that and he's like, oh, I'm sorry if this is your shirt and or whatever. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But people, um, you know, who, who knows? Who knows who they are? They, maybe they'll never reveal themselves. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, because then everybody's going to bug them and, and <laughs> rip off all their stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, what do you think about the new um, UK and Germany thing? Are you excited for that? Yeah, most definitely because, you know, people are now starting to uh, talk about last year. And I guess maybe Amazon said it was okay. <laughs> and I'm hearing, you know, great things that the sales were awesome and, uh, Q4 was, it was like a nice income boost for them. And I don't have it yet. I haven't seen any migration going on in my account, but um, I know from create space and doing Kindle publishing that there is a, there is definitely a market, you know, for the European countries um, to want to have this stuff. I mean, I don't think it's so simple for them to pop into a store and order, you know, custom t-shirt and stuff. So I think it's going to be really good for us. Yeah, I think it's going to, and I actually even heard that, um, I think some guy said he's at the 6,000 tier, and then when they opened that up, they they bumped him to 12K. Awesome. And yeah, so, just to give them the room, probably, for their listings. Yeah, shoot. <laughs> because um, even, I've even talked to some people where they say, well, they're moving my some of my listings over, and every time they move one, it's taking, you know, it's taking it off my account, you know, every shirt. And so, right, right. 
and you have to, you know, so pretty much you can make a shirt now, I would say, hopefully you'll be able to upload it to all three platforms. So. Yeah, it's kind of a, a different things I'm hearing is some of them are automatically Amazon's taken them or some of them, um, not very many people have said anything about them being able to go in and select the, the country. I'm assuming at some point that's the way it's going to go. Yeah. Um, it would be just really great if they adopted a Teespring kind of mentality, though, or just said, okay, you want it on hoodie, T-shirt, pop socket, whatever, and then all the locations. Because when you go to upload to CreateSpace or Kindle, you know, it, it says, like, it has little check boxes for, for where you want it to go. Yeah. So, And hopefully they'll open it up to um, – because in Kindle, how many countries are on there? There's, like, 10 countries that they go to, right? Something like that. Yeah, it's, it's quite a few. Um, and so Even like Japan is on there and Brazil and <laughs> yeah. So um, hopefully these are like, I think these are the test sites. Cause I was watching um, the, I was listening to the merch minds podcast last night and they were talking about young and uh, Glenn were fine. They finally said, well, okay, well eight months ago, we were able to beta test the Europe market. And I'm like, Oh wow. So, you know, eight months ago. So maybe there's, they'll eventually open up to all these other countries. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that's in the works, you know, Amazon doesn't, they don't ever come into the space with like, oh, let's just take our time and tread, you know, a little bit carefully. It's like, no, full stop. They just <laughs> go all in with everything. Maybe one day they'll uh, say, all right, Joe and Amy, we're going to let y'all beta test uh, Brazil and whatever, but you yeah. guys can't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah. I'll be like, <laughs> uh, okay. No yeah. problem. Yeah, because I'm sure if they, uh, you know, they're poking around on Facebook and you're blabbing. <laughs> yeah. The next thing you know, you're out. <laughs> I mean, because they were saying at the last when they all went to Vegas, when they went to the license licensing expo, they said that um, like the main people are in like all the merch groups. And um, I actually was asking somebody from there. I'm like, they say anything about Merch University? And they're like, yeah, they know who you are, Joe. And I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> nice, nice. So now definitely uh, you're you're going crazy with this. Uh, power punch they definitely know who you are yeah <laughs> that'd be funny if someone pops on there one day <laughs> yeah hey, what's up jeff <laughs> jeff bezos in the house they probably watch you <laughs> so. yeah i mean i don't know because uh either they'd have to see i guess if they're in like my um the group i'm part of with the girls the merch money group if they were in there um they'll see me share the video uh but unless they actually went to my timeline you know my profile but who knows? Enough people are sharing my stuff out there now that <laughs> it could have landed already in the in their face. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, tell me about the Merch Money Girls. How did that whole thing come about? Yeah, so I was part of a Facebook group, um, Merch Girl Hustle, and I was just kind of randomly posting in there, giving some tips, and uh, you know, just giving back something positive. And Helen Kinson saw me posting and she reached out and she was like, Hey, um, considering doing like a YouTube channel, just girls talking merch. She was like, would you want to be a part of that? And it was kind of like, she didn't really think I would. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, yeah, that'd be cool. You know? And, and it was like, everybody she asked, she didn't think they were going to say yes. And they all said yes. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah. And then we just put it together and then, you know, it expanded pretty fast from talking merch to talking all the other PODs as well. Yeah, and um, who, who are some of the people that um, y'all have interviewed so far? Well, of course, Jacob Topping was uh, first guest. He uh, raced to the, the front of the line there. <laughs> uh, we've had Kelly Roberts. Um, we've had uh, Dennis Duncan. He was like one of the first people to come out at a really high merch tier. And let's see, we've had Laura Burke. She's got the POD squad. Um feel bad if I'm leaving out somebody big. Oh, uh, we've had Matt and RJ on there, Matt Sheeran and, and RJ Martinez. Yeah, I mean, like all kinds of people. And we got people lined up, you know, and we were like booked till, gosh, uh, since like the beginning of May, we were booked to the end of August already. Wow. <laughs> like, yeah, people were like really excited to be on and, you know, we're telling everybody, okay, we'll, <laughs> we'll see you in like August, September. And they're like, what? <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's been going really good. We've got uh, Anthony from uh, Jersey Empire next week. so. Oh, that'll be That's good. Yeah, he's he's good to – he'll be fun to talk to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've you know been trying to get you on this show for a while, and now I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, you never know with uh, people's schedules of what they're going to do. And, man, it just seems like time is flying by anyway, so. 
Yeah, I mean, I feel like it. I think we started in, what was it, May or June? And um, I'm like, what? It's already August? Like, <laughs> Yeah, he was already uh, developing a, a following and stuff because um, I actually had uh, Helen on here a couple of weeks ago. And so she got to tell me a little bit, too, about Merch Money and how everything started. And she was she was she seemed very happy about it. Oh, yeah. I think it's like. Uh, you know, it's, it's something you don't realize something is going to become big until you really put like your all into it. And then you see like just all this stuff going around and you're attracting people to it. And people are like, we love you. And like, you know, in the chat Monday nights, people are like, I'm watching you instead of, you know, whatever on Netflix or <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Guys will come on and be like, I'm missing the sports game for blah, blah, blah. But I wanted to see you girls. <laughs> Yeah, because that's cool. Because uh, most most of the shows, I would say, come on during like the afternoon, and so you guys are like one of the only shows that come on. I don't yeah, think there's any show the that evening. comes on Monday night. So yeah, exactly. And she that was her plan intentionally was to make sure she wasn't overlapping anybody else's. And um, she's like, well, nothing's going on Mondays, and Monday worked out for all of us girls, so it's good. What um when do you do your power punch show? Most of the time I'm live between 11 a.m. Eastern, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern. Today is going to be a little late because I got some stuff going on. But, I mean, people, they just know. They know I'll be on at some point. I'm just, like, I'm dedicated, you know. I, if I got to come on at 8 o'clock at night, I will. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Just uh, when it, So, I actually, you know what, what I've learned just from doing all these shows and stuff, I mean, it is – it just makes me, um, you know, dive deeper and, you know, I'm watching like a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of like TED Talks, a lot of motivational stuff. And like it just causes me to go like research like crazy just because I'm sharing so much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you want to be you want to be someone that people come to and, and you feel like you got a little bit to give back, a little bit of knowledge, but you got to grow, too. You know? Yeah. What did you. Um, so you said you had a coach. How did what what how did all, that all go down? Yeah, so he actually, um, his name is Chris Blair, and he was actually one of our guests on Merch Money uh, probably like a month ago, a month and a half ago. And he was big in the Shopify uh, sphere, you know, and I knew that he just did print on demand. He didn't do drop shipping. Um, he basically taught against doing drop shipping and said, you know, build a business, build a brand, build your niche, just stick to one thing. And so I just reached out and, you know, hooked up with him for coaching and heard a lot of good things. And um, yeah, like to this day, I'm still using uh, print on demand strategies that he taught me as far as research, um, as far as like what, you know, quality designs, how to test things. And there was just some really uh, interesting things that he could see differently than I could. And, and he could tell me why, you know, why does this work? Okay, well, you go this route, you're not into so much saturation, you know, or you do this and you make it unique. So I, I apply the stuff he taught me like still to this day. Is there something you could share that maybe um, just maybe like one thing that you could share that uh, people would uh, could go apply today? Yeah. Um, you know, I was finding a lot of gold on Pinterest. Um, it, it It's more for women's niches, but, you know, I was going on there and trying to find just funny stuff, quotes, things like that. Um, it's unfortunate they took away the uh, the repins thing because that really helped you to see, you know, uh, how many times people were liking it, sharing it. Uh, I think you can still do it on mobile. You can maybe still see the, the repins. I'm just always on desktop. It's like, it's kind of a pain to <laughs> like pull out the phone. Okay, let me go through here. But yeah, I would go on there and I would look up something and try to like tweak it for my niche, you know, maybe it was something funny was maybe like a broad quote, you know, but I'd be like, okay, how can I tweak this to make it applicable for my niche, you know? That's pretty good. That's actually a good idea because uh, take something popular in one way and then just flip it and then yeah. make it yourself. Exactly. And do you, do you, are your shirts, would you say that they're geared more towards women? Nowadays, yes. When I first started, it was the opposite. And I think that made it more challenging to sell on Facebook ads uh, because most of the women, uh, most of the buyers are women on Facebook. And unless they are buying a gift for a man, you know, it typically not very many guys are like buying stuff for themselves on through Facebook ads. <laughs> uh, yeah. Unless maybe it was a gadget, which I wasn't selling gadgets or electronics. 
But yeah, so I, I shifted gears and I noticed the same trend when I got on Etsy because I was trying to still see if these designs would work that were kind of for men. And I was like, man, I'm not really selling this stuff. I was like, maybe I should try some more female niche stuff. And sure enough, that's definitely been a better um, option for me there. So like maybe it'd be better to, to sell like um, hobbies for women or something like that would instead of like going for like hobbies for men. Yeah, exactly. Fine. Yeah. And even just like in your design elements, you know, like, are you making shirts that only a guy would wear? Like it's really manly, you know, or is it more a little bit neutral, like some sarcastic, funny quote that anybody would wear? Um, I think to, to lean towards the unisex or the women is probably a better idea than to just do strictly men's designs, at least in my experience. Now, if you happen to just kill it in some niche like dirt bikes or something, then by all means, you know, take over. <laughs> what do you do like more like script font or more like uh, red or pink or purple colors? Or would you, when you're still doing these um, women? Um, it depends on like what I'm seeing in the market. Cause sometimes I'll see stuff and I'm like, Ooh, I don't think I would have tested that, but somebody's buying this shirt. So if I see a trend, you know, maybe I'm looking on merch informer and I see a lot of, uh, script font for a certain niche by all means yes I will use a script font and obviously still trying to make it unique I never want to just take somebody else's script font and just do the same thing you know that's that's just useless uh, waste of time but yeah if I see like um, a certain niche and all of a sudden I'm seeing uh, all these shirts you know like three out of four have pink on them or purple yeah definitely I'm incorporating that uh, what have you found more success in like um like text only graphic only or text and graphic text and graphic for sure um i don't think i had very many shirts to test with just text in the beginning and like i said when i was taking shirts from my shopify store and putting them on uh, merch like 99 percent of them had a graphic because i wanted the shirt to stand out in facebook you know on an ad and if you just have text nothing really crazy, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to grab that buyer's attention. So mostly that's what I do. And to, you know, even to this day, I, I try to do some more, you know, they're just text, but I'm, I've got to learn the fonts, you know, a little bit better so that I can see what's good for what niche. So we test it every now and then, but I, I just feel more like I'm in a comfort zone with a little graphic somewhere. <laughs> do you, so do you tell your designers like which fonts to use or do you have just like a select amount of fonts you use only? I do have like a font resource. Um, I basically put a whole bunch of different types of um, genres, you know, into a, a document. And I said, okay, for, uh, you know, there's like one is like futuristic. So you got like real spacey looking font. I just put a couple of um, different ideas under there and I say, okay, I give them the reins and say, you pick one of these. But sometimes I do tell them which one to use. But um, I think from the examples, you know, a lot of times I can either say, okay, use something similar to this kind of font, or I can say this font is awful, make <laughs> it fit the niche, you know? Because <laughs> sometimes you're like, I can't believe this shirt sold with like, you know, the, the sans serif font or something. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. What would you say is your most um, popular color of shirts that sell? Black. Definitely. Yeah. Do you ever try to go? Okay. So I, if I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, I got to make more shirts. See the sometimes I think this, I'm like, okay, I know women buy most of the shirts. So I need to list um, purple or pink, but you know what? Sometimes I'll do, I'll, I'll list, the same shirt and I'll just, I'll do two, upload it twice and pick 10 colors. Cause I sometimes yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, even though you would, you would think, okay, it's a women's style design, whatever, they're probably going to want a women's color. Either people are buying for somebody else and they don't want to pick the wrong color in case they are like, Oh, I hate that shade of pink. You know what I mean? Um, so maybe they just go neutral. They pick black. They, they know they'll like the message. And, you know, I, I do see some uh, navy, some heather gray, every now and then some purple, you know, but the ones you would think, they don't really sell that much. Um, now, I did see a little bit of a difference during the, the spring and summer uh, when some people were buying light colored shirts and I was intentionally making sure, you know, okay, let's make sure we got yellow and green and all that stuff on there. But yeah, for the most part, I think people just want something simple that 
won't offend anybody. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they don't get sick of it. You know. And I guess you you kind of really have to throw black in there anyway. So. Yeah, I think that's always should be an option if it makes sense. You know, um, obviously, if your design doesn't show up, then don't. But. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what about pop sockets? Are you are you are have you been doing any of those or? Yeah, I got uh, probably about 1,200 pops up right now. And oh, my gosh. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to devote about 25% of my account to doing them because I put up like, you know, 50 or 100, and I started seeing sales within a couple of days. I'm like, why not put up more, you know? So I just – and there, there, it makes the uploading process so much easier too because it's just like, yeah, you know, right. use that with Merch Buddy and bam, you know, <laughs> you're done. So uh, you're full now, so you now you just kind of have to wait it out, right, until you tear up. Yeah, yeah. I'm just just got to get my sales, a couple of sales in there, and uh, how I'll, many I'll more sales there. do you think you need before you get you can go to six k? I got about two hundred left, I think, which is no big deal. Um, you know, it was a lot more intimidating when I saw twelve hundred. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, let's get it together. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a uh, coming. It's it's fun, you know, tearing up. So hopefully, I wouldn't mind getting to six thousand before the end. But I'll also be satisfied. We can go to the UK and Germany, so that's pretty cool too. So yeah, and that got me thinking. Like, should I leave a couple of slots open just in case they just start randomly kicking stuff over there? You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, if they do, maybe they would say like, okay, she's full. Let we want to move her, but let's just give her. Just give her the six k. 8k <laughs> or 8k hey yeah i'll take it <laughs> <laughs> let's just bump her up and then we'll make all her shirts over there so sometimes there seems a very logical way to the tiering process and sometimes it's like no rhyme or reason you know for like example of the people that were getting bumped from 100 to 500 and they didn't have the sales but i guess something about their account amazon said okay they deserve it let's bump them you know I know I didn't get that privilege, so. Oh, well. No, me neither. <laughs> I like throw them my way. Amazon's my turn. <laughs> yeah, I have a few hundred extra. Throw them, give me, bump me up to six k. Yeah. So for you, do you just need the uh, slots full? Is that where you're at? I'm actually, you know, I'm actually trying to get them full. It seems like every time I get up really high, I just start losing shirts. So. <laughs> But I think actually, like in the next couple of days, it's gonna be where they won't go away. So. Yeah, I want to say it's like August 10th or something. Yeah, August 10th. August. I've heard August 10th. So uh, hopefully by then I get to start uploading like crazy. I mean, I still am every day. I try to upload what I we have like 400 a day. I don't ever get there, but, you know, I've been trying to do like 50 or 60 a day if I can. Yeah. Yeah, I was doing that for a while and it was just so many uh, takedowns that it felt like I was treading water, you know, and I was starting to go oh. backwards, you know, and I'm like, Okay, we got to ramp it up. So I'm I'm doing somewhere between seventy and a hundred a day now, just to just to stay on top, you know. Yeah, because I was uh, I think I probably had like six or seven hundred come down like the last month. So it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and then you're like, should I put them back up? Should I waste time like going back through and <laughs> finding the designs again? <laughs> but I'll, another thing I've been doing is just to get them all those slots filled. Is I've been uploading too standard and then i'll upload to um long sleeves sweatshirts and then hoodies so okay are you seeing anything selling yet for the the long sleeve stuff uh yeah i've been selling yeah i've sold some long sleeves and and some hoodies too so yeah okay yeah i haven't really i've never sold a sweatshirt though so i don't know really that. yeah it's rare it is rare i kind of made me think like unless i'm doing some sort of ugly christmas sweater type deal i probably won't really even do sweatshirts this year yeah so I don't know. Maybe I will um, upload some of those. We'll see. Yeah, I'm we'll waiting on those slots. <laughs> <laughs> I have all those slots available, so I'm yeah. not well. <laughs> hey, that's good though. I mean, if you can, if that's what's holding you back, then do whatever you gotta do to fill it. Yeah. So um, I, mean, I just want to get them up. Just I mean, all that's all that's potential, you know, to sell. So. Mhm. Mm that's truth. So hopefully um, things will work out. So what do you got? Uh, what's your what's your kind of like your Q4 strategy now? Um, just being very strategic about the few instead of the many. And, you know, last year I was trying to do a lot of things and trying to be in a lot of stuff. And yes, it was nice seeing different things building and, and whatnot. But 
my efforts were scattered, you know? And so this year I'm just like, nope, I'm just narrowing in on the few things that work. And there's some other things I want to test a little bit in the pipeline, um, kind of related to Etsy and maybe even going into Shopify and Facebook ads again for Q4, uh, which I didn't touch last year just cause I was so trying to build up, um, everything organic. But yeah, I mean, just just focusing in what's already working right now, not trying to build up another platform, you know, like I did want to have more stuff up on Redbubble, but I'm just like, you know, it's best to just keep my VAs and, and myself focused on what we're already doing and just ramp things up as we get closer and closer. So are you uploading, are you going to be uploading more to Etsy? How many, how many um, designs do you have on Etsy? Uh, I have almost 1,100 products on Etsy. And we do anywhere from like 30 to 50 a week, uh, new uploads. And, um, yeah, we're not going hard on Etsy per se. I'm trying to just be again, strategic about what's working and then we just do more, you know, and not try to slam it with, um, products just for the sake of products, you know, but make it sure yeah. we're, we're putting the right stuff up over there. Do you put the same stuff? on merch that you do on Etsy? Yeah, like everything that's in Etsy is on merch, but not everything from merch is in Etsy. Because oh, obviously when you're paying 20 cents a, a listing, you kind of want to be, you know, on point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So hopefully that'll, um, hey, is, also I noticed that you have your, you have your own like private group, don't you? Like your own private coaching or Facebook group or something? Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's an extension of like the print on demand power punch uh, videos. I decided to do like trainings and do webinars and stuff where I'm really showing behind the scenes, like this is what I'm doing. And I'm kind of, you know, I'm given like more exclusive type content, I guess in my Facebook group. And for anybody that's interested, um, I have the link on like every power punch video and I'm sure Joe, you'll put it in the notes. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's a monthly paid group, $47 a month. But you know, if you can't make $47 from what I share, then, <laughs> you know, either there's something wrong or, you know, I'm, I'm just really bad at delivering uh, the, the message. <laughs> well, that's good. Have you been, um, how many people do you have in there now? Uh, we have about a dozen people in there right now. Yeah. Cause I think, you know, what holds people back sometimes they're like, well, I don't know, you know, and, and maybe it's a price point issue, but I really just wanted to take on people that were serious, you know, that really put the money on the table. I mean, I put down $5,000 for a coach, you know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. Um, and that's another thing I do. I do private coaching as well, like one-on-one -on -one, uh, for print on demand. But that was another thing with the group was I understood people couldn't afford to pay me hourly per se. So just pay a monthly fee and I'm just going to give you, uh, you know, a ton of stuff in the group and you can go at your leisure. There's no like, oh, we got to meet at this time, you know, have a call. It's just, you know, go in there look at the units, do some training, I can ask, um, you questions. ask questions. Yeah. Call you up in the middle of the night. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, not not that exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have a, my own like little uh, merch university Patreon group too, and so I have about a dozen in there too. So yeah, it's fun. We you'd have like just a little group just to uh, talk to and share things with. So yeah, I understand. Yeah, really and I I think people like that. Um, you know, that's something I learned from from my coach too. Is he has a, his own group as well for his course, and you know he charges big bucks for the course he has. And he was like, you know, guys, I'm not just trying to sell the course to everybody under the sun. I, I just want people in here that are serious. And I want to because he'll answer every single question in the group. Oh, wow. And yeah. And he's like, I want to be able to give my personal time. Obviously, if I throw 500 people in here at like 10 bucks a month or something, um, it's going to be hard. Right. So he's dedicated. You know, you post a question, he will answer it. So that's kind of yeah. how I am, too. Cool. Well, uh, hey, it was great having you on today, and uh, thank you yeah, for thank you. coming and sharing your uh, wisdom with us. Yeah, it was awesome. Thanks, Joe. What is a um, what, what is a maybe a couple books that you're reading now that um, um, I, I know you watch a lot of videos, a lot of motivational things. What is something like um, you could share with us, like who what we could be reading or watching? Yeah. So what's on my uh, my shelf at the moment or my nightstand? Um, Rereading the Ten X Rule by Grant Cardone. And probably for like the fifth time, sixth time. <laughs> wow. I never yeah. read that. Oh, it's it's a game changer, especially as we get into Q4. Yeah. 
it, basically the whole premise is, you know, pick a goal that's like 10 X what your current goal is. And then whatever you think it'll take to achieve that goal, 10 X the actions wow. of what you think. Yeah. Cause that's really the realistic uh, view of it. Right. You always think, Oh, it's, I'm just going to do these things and it's going to work. And you, you know, you're always cutting yourself short. So that one's, that one's a game changer. And also I'm uh, rereading the magic of thinking big. Uh, I think it's by Dr. David Schwartz. It's an old book from like the 50s. Yeah. It's really good though. I like that one video you shared. You were talking about like, it's called like the secret or something. Um, Was it the your wish is your command? I think so. Video? It was like some old dude from like the 50, the 40s or 30s or something. Oh, uh, the strangest secret, Earl Nightingale. Yeah, 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 that yeah. one. Yeah, Earl Nightingale, man. He was like the father of personal development and he started doing uh, like recordings on um, uh, back in the day, the LPs, right? You know, records, <laughs> that's how old he is. And I think he started like in the fifties and the strangest secret. I mean, it's only 30 minutes long. There's a ton of copies on YouTube that that'll really kind of shake up your head. You're like, Oh wow. It's, you know, you really start to understand what he's talking about when you listen to it a couple of times. Yeah. I listened to it a couple of times. I really enjoyed it. So it was good. Yeah. He's awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for coming on. And uh, it was good talking to you. And, look for, and I look forward to checking out your power punches every day. Awesome. Thanks, Joe. <laughs>